Hello friends, welcome to Adhesh Academy and today we are going to start a new lesson and also a new chapter that is about emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is extremely important for everyone. Whether you are a professional, whether you are a family person, whether you are a civil servant, whether you are a politician, entrepreneur, leader, there is absolutely no doubt that emotional intelligence is one of the most important characteristic of a person. If you cannot feel the emotions of other people, you hardly have got any chance of success in your life. So today we are going to learn about the fundamentals of emotional intelligence. What actually is emotional intelligence? But before we go for emotional intelligence, let's understand the intelligence itself. The intelligence is broadly defined as the capacity to understand the world and resourcefulness to cope up with its challenges. See, if you want to succeed in this world, you should have the accurate knowledge of the world. Because the world is throwing you problem every day, every moment. And only when you are able to tackle those problems, you are likely to succeed in your life. So emotional intelligence is part of it because without emotions it is not possible to understand the people and the world in the fullest manner. Intelligence basically refers to the individual's ability to understand complex ideas, to adapt effectively to the environment, this requires emotional intelligence, to learn from experience, to engage in various forms of reasoning and to overcome obstacle by careful thoughts. So if you have all these capacities, abilities, then you are likely to succeed in this world and people will say, okay, this person is an intelligent person. Emotional intelligence is part of the intelligence. It is not different from the regular concept of intelligence. Without having emotional basis, actually the knowledge is incomplete. It is like the word which is typed in a computer. Computer knows all the words, but it doesn't understand the feelings or the spirit behind this word. As a human being also, if we don't have emotions, we can memorize all the words, but we will not understand the true intent of the words. Let's now understand the history of the emotional intelligence. The concept of emotional intelligence has got nothing new. It is there since ages. In 4th century BC, a famous Greek philosopher said, all learning has an emotional base. Without emotions, we cannot do learning. We cannot learn the thing properly. If you remember, in our own country, the famous Sufi poet Kabir Das said, Pothi pad pad jag mua, pandit bhaya na koi, dhai akhar prem ka, padhe jo pandit hoi. Again, he said the same thing. That if you have knowledge of all the scriptures, all the books, you are not a wise person. Only when you have love in your heart, then only you are the truly wise person. So this is very, very important. So this concept of emotional intelligence is very, very old. But in 1930s, Edward Throngile gave this term social intelligence and he said that this is the ability to get along with other people. So initially social intelligence meant that how we get along with other people because people knew that this trait is very very important. In 1985, Vaine Pane introduced the term emotional intelligence in his doctoral dissertation titled A Study of Emotion Developing Emotional Intelligence self-integration relating to fear, pain and desire. Then in 1987, Keith Beasley used the term emotional quotient in an article published in Mensa magazine and that was perhaps the first published use of this term. But the concept of emotional intelligence became popular in the world after in 1995, Daniel Goldman wrote a book called Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than the IQ. In this book, Daniel Goldman said that for the leaders or for success, 
the emotional intelligence is more important than the IQ which we may consider the criteria for success. Now let us define emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to identify and manage your own emotions and emotions of others. That means you should be able to identify your emotions and other people's emotion. You should be able to manage your emotions and other people's emotion. So if you can create the necessary emotions which is required for the given situation for succeeding in life, then you are truly an emotionally intelligent person. So it is generally said that the emotional intelligence should include three skills. Number one, understanding emotion of self and others, using emotion for solving complex problems of life and third that managing emotions to lead a happy and successful life. If you cannot manage your emotions, if you are full of hatred, anger, there is absolutely no way you can become happy or successful in your life. There are many benefits if you can develop emotional intelligence. For example, if you are emotionally intelligent, you will have better social interaction and better relationships. Because all the relationships are connected with each other only by the bond of emotion. Emotions are like the glue which connect people. Otherwise, no two people can stay together if there is no emotional connect with each other. Then emotional intelligence led to better self-perception. If you are emotionally intelligent, you can understand yourself better. Most people what happens is that they consider themselves different than what other people consider them. You have to be emotionally intelligent to know what you truly are. And when there is no difference between your perception of yourself and society's perception of yourself, then you will be able to work out very well in whichever field you choose to be. Emotional intelligence gives you a positive attitude of life. You will be full of energy because you will feel connected with each other and not isolated from others. You will not fear other people. You will not be pessimistic. You will be full of positive attitude. You will have better family and intimate relationships with a spouse, with your children. You can have much stronger relationship if you are emotionally intelligent. Your performance in the academics will also improve. Because if you feel like studying, if you are full of positive energy, if you are full of love, if you are full of hope and optimism, naturally you will be much more focused when you are studying and your performance is also going to improve. Then you have better social relationship during work and during negotiation. In your office, you will be very comfortable with your colleagues, your bosses, your subordinates and definitely your performance is going to go up. When you have to deal with other people, you can always negotiate a term which is mutually acceptable to both and so it will avoid all chances of confrontation. And thus, if you are emotionally intelligent, you will have a better psychological well-being. You will be psychologically happy and healthy. So these are the advantages of emotional intelligence. Daniel Goleman is considered to be the most prominent figure for emotional intelligence. He said, in a very real sense, we have two minds, one that thinks and one that feels. Sometimes we call it heart and head. We know that the source of our feeling and the source of our rational thinking come from different type of mind, different half of mind. Sometimes the scientists say that our left brain actually do the rational thinking and the right brain do the emotional feelings. And therefore, a leader and successful person is one who is able to perfectly harmonize and coordinate the left and right brain. That means the rational thinking as well as the emotional feelings which he has. If you have the synergy of the two, nobody can stop you and you can be extremely successful in your life. Excessive emotion is bad. Excessive rationality is bad. The balance of the two is the best. So Daniel Goldman said that EI accounts for more career success than IQ. He says that high IQ persons are more aware of their emotions and the emotions of others and therefore they can lead the companies better. A high EQ employee shows more confidence in their roles which allows them to face demanding tasks more positively. If you are confident about yourself, there is no doubt 
that you can perform much better in your job. Then it develops a strong and positive relationship with the co-worker and perform efficiently and effectively in the work teams. So these are the advantages in the workplace and therefore the emotional intelligence is not only good for your family, for your relationships but also professionally and that is the reason that if the person has to select a CEO or the top person for the job, he will select a person who is also having a very high EQ or emotional intelligence. So he believed that EI or emotional intelligence is the better predictor of job performance than the IQ. Many times you will find that people blame their feelings, emotions, love for their problems. Many people are full of hatred, anger and they feel that their success is not because of the negative emotion. Let us first understand that there is nothing good or bad in this world. For example, fire. Is it good or bad? You can't say because you can use the fire for cooking your food and you can use the fire for burning a house. Water. It can cause flood but it fills your stomach and it also gives you life. Air. If there is a huge wind, it can destroy. But without air, we cannot survive. Food also is like that. Excessive of food or wrong type of food can cause harm. But without food also, we cannot live. Same way, electricity, wealth and power. Everything has got a positive side and the negative side. It depends upon how you use it. In the same way, all emotions can be used in the positive manner or in the negative manner. Like love. Now, love is a positive emotion. But there are many crimes which takes place because of the love. If you are unable to control your love, if you are unable to love the right person, then your life is not good. You will have a lot of problem. In the same way, hatred. It is generally considered to be a negative emotion. But if you hate the wrong type of person, wrong type of deeds and wrong type of actions, then you will be on the right path. So hatred per se is not bad. It depends upon whether you are able to use it properly or not. Same way the trust is a positive emotion but can be misused. Fear is a negative emotion but you can also use it in the positive sense at the right time. Kindness, anger, all these things have both pluses and minuses. It depends upon how you use it. That is why Aristotle, one of the greatest philosopher of the world, once said, anyone can become angry. That is easy. But to be angry with the right person and to the right degree at the right time for the right purpose and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and that is not easy. And a person who can use his anger also in the right way is the person who can be said to be a truly intelligent person, truly emotionally intelligent person. So you should know how to channelize your emotions to achieve the desired objective. Now, in order to understand how emotions can be used for any purpose, including passing a judgment on a very critical, I want to tell you the story of King Solomon. He is considered to be one of the wisest king which, who ever lived. This story is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible. Now, in this story what happens, there are the two mothers and they gave birth to child and one of the baby died. So the baby which survived, both women claimed the ownership of the baby. So they came to the King Solomon and they said that this baby belonged to them. Now in those days of course there was no DNA test, nobody could prove whom the baby belonged. But King Solomon has a wonderful idea. He said, cut the baby into two, take the sword, cut the baby into two, give half of to each mother. Everybody was horrified. So the true mother was more horrified. Now she said, I don't want the half of the child, let it be given to the other woman. While the other woman said, okay, fine, if I don't get it, the other person will also not get it. Because once you cut the boy into half, naturally the boy cannot survive. Then king decided that the lady who said that she doesn't want the son or the child, is the true mother because no mother would like her child to be dissected, to be killed. She will be more happy if the child is with the other woman than if the child dies. 
and that is how understanding the human emotion he was able to pass a judgment which was fair true and just in the same way my friend if you have emotional intelligence you can take the right decision in most of the real life situation so i hope that you have been able to understand the fundamental concepts of emotional intelligence and we can use this concept when we are working in any profession including civil services thank you very much for watching the video